Jeff Brunner here with the ABB HVACR Applications Engineering Team. And in this video, I would like to review with you accessing the diagnostic event log of the ACH 580 using ABB's Drive Composer application. Now, the ACH 580 diagnostics includes two separate logs, each of them storing up to 32 entries in each. And these are categorized as faults. There's a separate fault log, and this is faults, whether there's a fault reset, uh, the operating data that was occurring at the time of the fault, and most importantly, timestamps for every entry. There's a separate log called the event log. And in this fault log, it's just typical state transitions during normal operations. So start, stop, safety status, supervision, um, these types of things. And again, also including timestamps. And when you access these logs through the keypad, they're actually accessed separately. And there are two separate videos which detail this key, keypad access, and I, links to these will be included in the description below. So in this video, we're going to specifically cover using ABB's Drive Composer application. And using this tool, the logs are actually merged, and this therefore provides a more complete view of the interaction between the two. And down below here, I've also got a link to this application. <clears throat> and for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go through the installation process itself. This video will focus specifically just on how to access the event log using Drive Composer. And the installation process will be covered in separate technical material. So before we get started, I thought I'd take the opportunity to also show how the connection is made to the drive and it uses a USB mini cable. So I included a picture here of what that connector looks like because there's so many different types of USB cables. And uh, the red arrow here is indicating there's a small cover on the panel that you just open up and make the connection directly to the drive. So let's get started. So here I have already launched the Drive Composer application and uh, this is the initial dialog that first comes up. And the first thing you'll have the option to do is select the connection type. And I have chosen the USB connection because that's how I'm connected to the panel. And so once you've made the selection, you simply push connect. And now the Drive Composer application is going out and querying for any devices that are connected over the USB COM port. And then it just in a second here, it's going to come up with, uh, with the devices that it has found. Here it is. And so this is the initial screen where it has successfully made a connection and it gives the drive name that it has found. In this case, it's just, just this one drive. And across the top, you'll see some of the interactive buttons that uh, are available with the application. And these are the different options that we're going to be able to exercise uh, as we go through this session. Now, if you hover over the drive's name, you'll see uh, the different options that are available with the Drive Composer application. And in this case, we'll select the event logger and you will see that it is empty uh, because I have previously cleared it before starting this recording. And at the end of this video, I'll explain how to clear the event logger. So this is going to be our starting point. So now we're in a position to start putting the drive through some normal operating paces and get a sense of how the different events get reported in the event log. So I'm connected to a demo case and I've got a panel here that will allow me to trigger different inputs and we'll just start sequencing the drive through some normal operating states and see how things present themselves in the event log. For the first step, let's just take and switch the drive into hand mode and in this case the off is active and we'll see how that presents itself in the log. So we'll refresh. And okay, so our first event has been recorded and see, we'll see the time and the date and we'll see that something as even as simple as transitioning from auto to off is recorded in the log. So next we'll go ahead and start the drive. So we'll push the hand button and we've got a set point here of 27.4 Hertz. And you'll see that this arrow in the upper left turns green and this indicates that the drive is running. So we'll refresh the log and we'll see that two more events uh, have been added indicating that we have switched to hand mode and that modulation has started. So now we can go back to off and refresh again. And now we see that the modulation has stopped and now we're back in off. So now let's go back to auto. And we're currently configured for the default reference source, which is analog input one. And we can see that we've got a set point of 27.4 Hertz. So now I'm going to close DI one. 
And we can see by the green arrow that the drive has started again. So we'll refresh. And so a couple of new events have been added. Uh, we see that we switched from off to auto. And then we executed a start command by closing DI1. And that modulation has started. So, so this is just an indication that even during normal operation, all of the sequencing is included in the event log. And so again, it just gives you good insight into what the sequence that a drive is going through. And in particular, this is useful information when faults are getting recorded. And you want to see what possibly led up to the event, uh, which may have then triggered the fault. So now we can open DI1. And we can refresh. Our, our arrow goes gray. We can refresh. And we can see that the auto stop was initiated and that modulation has stopped. So again, just more common sequences. So let's start up again. Okay, so we're running. And now let's open up a safety. So, so again, the drive is in a default configuration. So interlock one is configured for DI4. So I will open up a safety. And up here in the corner, you'll see that not only is the arrow gone gray, indicating that we're stopped, but you also see that the warning is being enunciated that the start interlock is missing. And so we'll refresh the log. Okay, now we can see here how the warning has now been included. And so this is the symbol that says we are in an alarm or a warning state. And then we can simply make our safety again. So I reclosed DI4. Okay, and then the upper left-hand corner, you can see that the warning is gone and that the arrow has gone green again. So we've just started again. So let's see what this looks like in the log. Okay, we can see that the warning has been cleared. And uh, you'll see that the indication for this is that this, this warning symbol has now gone gray. So again, the symbols themselves have got some meaning behind them. And that's why I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of slowly build this log. Um, and then you get an idea of how different events present themselves. So I've also got the drive set up for a supervision function based on the output speed. And I believe my threshold was 30 hertz. So I'm going to slowly start to raise the input set point. And you'll be able to see in the active reference box that it's going to go up. And then as I cross 30, yep, yep, you'll see um, that the warning uh, for supervision also goes active. And uh, once we got above 30 hertz, so let's see what that looks like. Okay. And again, it's similar to what the interlock looked like. You're going to get this yellow triangle um, with a black exclamation point in it, suggesting the warning is active. And so now I'll lower the set point again. And as I get down below 30, the warning should automatically clear, uh, which it does. And again, if I refresh this, you'll see that the supervision warning has gone gray, indicating that it's been cleared. So we haven't triggered a fault yet. So while we're running, I've got the drive configured to fault if I close, uh, it's DI5. And, and so I'm going to trigger a fault now. Open up DI5. Okay. And here you can see that the drive has stopped. And in this case, you get the the red symbol with the X in it, indicating that we're in a fault state. And then you also get uh, an indication of what the fault actually is and so we'll take a look at the fault log okay now you can see what it looks like when there's a fault entered and all the additional data that's included in that and this is very useful all this additional use information is very useful for helping to diagnose what the operating conditions were at the time of the fault and you'll see over here all these different these are actually parameter numbers uh, with the relevant data associated with it. And I'll, uh, you get those from the firmware manual, which I can pull up um, real quickly here, and we get a sense for what those look like. And so here's a detailed description from the manual of, of what exactly all this data is with respect to the faults. Let's go back to our Drive Composer session. Um, so I can clear the fault. By first reclosing DI5, and then I can trigger a fault reset. Okay, and you can see that or that the, the drive is automatically restarted again because my uh, safety interlock was still active and my run command was still active. So we immediately started running again. So we'll refresh 
the log. And yeah, again, so you see that the fault reset was initiated. And similar to the warnings, this symbol then goes gray. And then we get an indication that modulation has restarted. And so finally, I'll just open up DI1 to, to clear my run command. So now we have uh, once again stopped. And so now we're done here. And so, so here again is a sequence of different operating conditions that I wanted to demonstrate and show how they get recorded and presented in the event log. So next I'm gonna get into the steps that go into generating what we call a support package, which is a very useful feature for capturing a drive's parameters and event log to share back with us here at the factory for offline analysis. Next, I'd like to demonstrate how to generate this so-called support package, which some of you may have already done, or some of you may have at least heard of it. Uh, if you haven't, please take note of how to do it, because it's a really common thing that we here at the factory ask, um, whether it be tech support or the applications engineering team. We will ask if a support package is available, because it includes so much valuable information. Uh, in, in this context, we're talking about the event logger, which is part of what's in the support package, but it's everything else. It's all the parameter settings, it's the serial number, it's the software version. So uh, all of that information is quite comprehensive, and with it, it eliminates a lot of the back and forth of questions and answers that we often end up needing to do if we don't have it. So simply, simply having the support package goes a long way in troubleshooting problems. So in the Drive Composer interface, it's in the upper right hand corner here. You'll, you'll see this wrench. And if you hover over it, you'll see it says make support package. So it's as simple as clicking on that. And then it's automatically generated in the background. And so it's downloading all the information I just referred to. And then we'll get the chance to store it in the laptop, which then you can take away from the site with you and send it back to us at the factory. And then we can collaborate with all this detailed information and really get to the resolution much faster. So we're completing this save or the creation of it, actually. And it's as it finishes up here, we'll get a dialogue up that lets us uh, name it and pick the location where we're going to store it. And you can see it does take it does take a few minutes to generate because it is um, putting together a lot of this detailed information. So here's the dialog now where it will let us store it. So I will simply just store it on my desktop and call it uh, test. Here, I've got a version of it already. Replace it. Sure. OK. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So now we've got this file. And so what I'd like to do now is shut down this live session and then disconnect. And then I'll restart and kind of go through what it would look like to connect in an offline mode and open up a support package. And then it'll be just as if I was connected live to the drive, except in this case, I'll be completely offline. But I have access to all the same information that I have if I was actually connected to the drive. And one additional comment I do need to make, though, is that the entry version of Drive Composer doesn't support uh, this support package review. This is only available in the pro version. And you can see uh, here, I'm actually running a version of pro, but I wanted to show you what it would look like for us at the factory if you forward us a support package, what it would look like then and what we do with that when we can open it up and see, even when we're not connected to a drive, everything as if we were connected to the drive. So I've closed out the original session and I've disconnected from the drive. And now I'm back to this initial launch screen that we started with at the beginning of the video, and we'll see the same dialog comes up. And in this case, rather than connect, because I'm not actually connected to a drive, I'll just use this offline slash virtual drive button. And it's going to give me the, this warning saying a virtual drive is not, not found. And that's fine. You can ignore this, uh, and the application will still open. And so now, here we are open in the offline mode and you can see that there are no drives indicated. So now what we'll do to open a support package is under this file pull down and we'll go to open and here we see at the bottom open support package and now we can navigate to the test file uh, that we had just downloaded. And we see that here so we'll double click on that and after selecting that it will show up as a file drive. 
And so now the list of options when you hover over it are limited because we are not connected live. So we see it's a much shorter list. So now we can look again at the event logger. And we see here that if you go back in the video and look, you see that this is exactly what we ended with in the live session, all captured here, just as we saw when we were connected live. But again, here we are in a completely offline mode. So once you capture this file from a site and email it to the factory, this gives us great visibility to be able to collaborate on solving whatever the problem is. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to promote not only Drive Composer and the event logger, but why you hear us talking about this support package so often. I've connected back live to the drive here because there are a couple of additional items related to the event logger that I want to go over. The first is how to clear the event log, which I alluded to earlier. So uh, here we've got our original event log, which I've opened up, and we can see that the same log exists as it was before we disconnected. So clearing the log is done with a parameter. So next, we'll need to open up the parameter tab and scroll down to group 96, which is the system settings. So we'll open this up. And then we can scroll down to parameter 9651. Clear fault and event logger. And so we'll select the value. And let's see, we have the option to reset it. So we'll select reset. And that's it. So we'll close out of this and we'll return to the event logger. And we'll see that it still looks the same because until we refresh, it won't update. So we'll hit refresh. And now we can see that the event log is completely clear. One final item I'd like to review is configuration of the event logger. As we've seen throughout this video, in addition to faults and warnings, all of the usual state transitions that occur during normal operation are also recorded. So with all of these events being recorded, understand that when the log fills up, they start falling out the bottom. And so when you're trying to capture as much fault-specific information as possible, sometimes you may want to mask some of these more common state transitions. And so I wanted to point out that there are some settings that you can make in the parameters. And it's back in this group 96 where we cleared uh, the event log. So we'll select parameters again, and we will scroll down to group 96. Open that up, and then we will scroll down to parameter 9639 event configuration. So here, uh, if you select this, you'll see that there are eight optional events that you can enable and disable, and they are all enabled by default. And so if you want to disable these individually to give yourself more capacity in the event logger, there is this option to configure it for more efficient storage of activity. So I just wanted to take this opportunity here at the end of the presentation to point this out. So in closing, this has been a video reviewing the use of ABB's Drive Composer application for accessing the diagnostic log in the ACH 580. And in addition to reviewing how to use the tool for the event logger, we also learned how to create what's called a support package, save that support package, and then open it up in offline mode and really have access to all of the drive's information as if you are actually connected. And this is really a very useful tool uh, for troubleshooting users' applications, both for you and your offices and for us back here at the factory. And one additional comment I'd like to make regarding support packages is that in addition to being able to create it using Drive Composer, you can also use it using our mobile app called DriveTune, which is another great option. So if you don't have your lap laptop or if you have higher end customers who are willing to download the drive tune app and connect to the drive over bluetooth you can create the same support package on your mobile device and then email that and then we can open it up using the drive composer application so it's a great way uh, offline without having to um, bring your laptop and connect your laptop to a drive to also get that very valuable support package. So I just wanted to make sure I added that additional comment here. And uh, there'll be a link in the description below to another video that's been created that details how to get a support package using the DriveTune application. Thanks for watching.